Yeah. We are talking license plates. We're talking about, oh, we, you haven't heard anything about my plates, <laughs> Not yours, oh, no. Okay. Not suspended. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. While you may not think of them too often, there are a lot of collectors in our area. In fact, the Automobile License Plate Collectors Association just had a meetup this month with tons okay. of rare vanity plates. Jordan Pascal with the DCS is here with us now. Uh, hey, he's going to talk about this uh, because this is a hobby that you kind of have, and we're going to talk about what you saw at this convention you went to. So, uh, so listen, first of all, license plates, I wouldn't think of this as uh, something to have at as, all. A, yeah, as a hobby, but it's popular apparently amongst this group. Tell us about that. Yeah, very. I mean, I, I like this stuff casually, but I went to this meetup a couple weeks ago, and I mean, there are people that are so passionate about this. I mean, people collecting everything from, like, you know, these bicentennial yeah. plates from D.C. We had... Uh, a Maryland plate. We had all cool. sorts of stuff. We got international stuff. Like people are really collecting almost anything you can think of. People's birth years, specific dates. Uh, it's it's really quite the collection. It's really fun to see all this old history. Yeah. How old is that Maryland plate behind you? Because I I don't remember that at all. 1969. 1969. Okay, uh, yeah, this is a radio plate, I think, for people that did, like, CB radio back in the day. So, that's cool. I mean, there's, there's really almost a plate for everything. It's pretty impressive. So, like you said, I guess people find their little niche and they start collecting. Are they doing it just for the joy of just uh, collecting uh, memorabilia, or, or is it sort of a resale market that folks are getting into? Yeah, it's a little bit of a hunt. I mean, there's definitely some people that are in it to buy and sell and make money and stuff. But for some people, it's just kind of the passion of, you know, finding that kind of uh, needle in the haystack of that one thing that they're looking for. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people seem to have known each other in this group, uh, people that hang out, uh, you know, at these meetups and then outside of it. So it's really quite a community, too. I was, yeah. I was impressed by that. What is the holy grail of license plates? Yeah. I need to know. I'm wondering the same thing. <laughs> This is interesting because there's so, I mean, like, everyone's holy grail is different. Like, you know, uh, one guy I talked to only collects, like, presidential and vice presidential plates oh, if they've okay. been on vehicles that presidents have been in. And he has quite a collection of them over the last, like, 30, 40 years. So I, I would say that's probably the toughest to get. But there's certainly a lot of different interesting types out there. Yeah, I'm wondering, how would you get a presidential plate? Are you, do you go, like, through the, the at archives or their family? Or, how would you or even do you get have that? to use the dark way? Right. How does this happen? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly like a hard, you know, think of how many presidents there's been in the motor vehicle age. Right. There's not a ton of plates, honestly, but, um, you know, he really built a reputation for this. He's been in the Wall Street Journal and Post and all sorts of different media. And so not only uh, does he have kind of connections uh, to different families he's reached out to, different presidential families, but also has kind of just built this reputation for collecting presidential plates. So how often does this group meet? Is it once a year or a couple times a year? As you said, I'm sure they're like a family now because not a whole lot of people collecting right. license plates, so they all probably know each other and are very close. Yeah, th there was about 80 people at this meetup. Uh, it was out up in Mount Airy, Mount Airy Maryland. Uh, but there's three meets around the region a year, uh, a couple in Virginia, this one in Maryland, and then there's a national convention every year that kind of moves around. So, And I'm told that is like the big uh, gathering. Yeah, you might not want to keep coming on the news because I think you're going to attract <laughs> more people, and that's going to mess it up for you trying to find that holy grail. What's your holy grail yeah. of license plate? Okay. So I'm, I'm from Nebraska originally. I've got the Nebraska Interstate Replica back here. I found uh, this one that I just love the design of the, these plates, honestly. This one's uh, from a couple years after I was born, but okay. uh, just the, the, I like the aesthetic. Give me a good looking plate. Uh, yeah. Virginia's got a ton of good looking plates. Maryland's got a couple good oh. looking plates, but yeah, I want the design. That's you know, my, just my Just real quick, I wonder when they make mistakes and the plates are kind of misprinted, can, are those also collector's items? Yes, and that was the, the theme of this meetup where collectors, you know, really dug through their collections and, and brought out the mistake plates. And that's everything from, like, you know, if, if DC was printed upside down or, you know, like the, right. this was printed upside right up. A lot oh, of different cool. mistakes that are out there. Okay, well, listen, Jordan, hey, thank Jordan. you for cluing us into a, a community that I'm sure a few people know about, but we know about them now. Yeah, we know about them now. License plates, who would have thunk yeah. it? Jordan, thank you so Very much. That's really fascinating. Appreciate it.